this. Uh, William Lawrence is a professor at the American University and a former senior U.S. diplomat. He joins us live from Washington, D.C. Welcome to the program. So, from a U.S. standpoint, overall, what are the options now and, and what are the risks? Uh, many in both categories. I think the, the simplest way to state this is that the U.S. needs to respond in a way that it hopes will deter uh, but does not escalate. And so it's an, it's an art, not a science. Uh, it's quite tricky. Until now, the U.S. has been um, in response to the 160 attacks on its troops in, uh, in Iraq and Syria. Um, it's mostly been striking um, uh, infrastructure and munitions depots and avoiding killing Iranians and civilians, um, although it, it, you know, it hasn't avoided killing or injuring uh, fighters from Iraq and Syria. Uh, but now that Americans have been deliberately killed on Jordanian soil, um, they have to go up to a next level. Um, and while um, re the Republicans are split on this, uh, you know, half of them say no wars and the other ones say hit Iran immediately, uh, um, uh, it was likely that the Biden administration will hit Iranian assets in a way that doesn't escalate. And, and uh, to compare to the alternative, what Israel did in Beirut and Damascus uh, with the assassinations is escalatory, whereas what the U.S. Uh, is trying to do here is send a message um, without provoking to the point of escalating the war in a large way. Well, given what you say then, I mean, what do you make of Qatar Hezbollah's declaration that it's suspending operations against U.S. forces? Um, you know, we don't have, we don't know anything for sure. Um, we know that there's some um, uh, pressure on Iran from all sides, including the Chinese and, uh, and, and Gulf Arab states and others, uh, to rein in all of its militias. We know that the Houthis are sort of going for broke because of their own domestic and regional political considerations, whereas the militias in Iraq and Syria and Lebanon, uh, all of which are close to governments, they're not resistance. If I could just back up and say, you know, Hamas is resistance. Uh, um, uh, lion's Den is resistance. These forces in Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq, and with the Houthis controlling the capital, those are governmental forces almost. It was the, uh, uh, the, the militias, right, in Iraq, along with Americans, that defeated ISIS, uh, uh, you know, not too long ago in Iraq. Uh, so this is the government, uh, to a large degree, uh, these, these, uh, these, these forces. Um, so, so ultimately, they 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 have to coordinate and bow to to some degree the Iraqi government and the Iranian government. So, you know, any step that restrains uh, their escalations is good. And with all this, uh, we've seen U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in the region many times. He's uh, reported to be heading to the region again later this week. How much has he achieved, though, in practical terms, in your view? Not much and not enough. Uh, you know, I've been so impressed with Bill Burns, uh, who's who's about to negotiate a, a breakthrough uh, um, uh, pause, humanitarian pause. Forgive for me, when you say Bill, Bill Burns, the career diplomat and director of CIA, that, that's who you mean, isn't it? Yeah, and, and almost every good negotiation, uh, uh, for better or for worse, has been connected to him. But when we've seen Jake Sullivan go out and make mistakes and Brett McGurk go out and sort of recycle some of the Trump administration, uh, um, um, uh, proposals and and even Blinken at times has made mistakes. Um, I have um, you know a great respect for his intellect and his ability to understand situations, and he has been delivering messages to the Israelis about uh, 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 restraining more. Um, but you know, within the Biden administration, I would say Kamala Harris, Lloyd Austin, Bill Burns are what you might call the peace camp, the ceasefire camp, uh, and we tend to see. Uh, more movement in that direction from that trio than the other trio along with Kirby. So, you know, there's always voices within an administration in, in different ways. And, 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 and I think Bill Burns is going to be at the heart, along with the Qataris, of any uh, uh, um, uh, ending of this war and ultimate um, a peaceful outcome. And what about the relationship then between the U.S. president and uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? Clearly, there's been a friction. I mean, will that ever reach a breaking point? We're almost there. It's 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 bad and gotten worse. Um, the U.S. can't wait for the Israelis to move on to another government. We have a sort of weird situation in which um, Netanyahu is a 15% approval rating, uh, and 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 Israelis want him to go. 
Um, his main rivals, Smotrich and Ben Gavir on the right, are more popular than ever, but their parties are not, and they probably won't do that well in elections. Uh, so the coup is going to possibly have to come up with new leadership as the largest party, and from the right, which is winning in Israel these days, and the Americans are talking to Gantz and, and, and Lapid about the after Netanyahu. Um, but, uh, you know, the way in which Netanyahu makes private commitments to the Americans and then goes to the Israeli press uh, and parliament and says almost the opposite, uh, and that he's not going to kowtow to the Americans, is, 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 is really quite destructive and, uh, and unproductive. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just a relationship that's not working very well. Biden's loyalties and commitment is to the Israeli state. Uh, you know, that grew out of the horrors of World War II. He's that older generation of Americans that believe that, you know, Americans who turned as uh, Jewish people away from their borders during the Holocaust have a, have a debt to Jewish people, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, you know, that, that the Americans are not far from turning the page to that old type of thinking. Even young Jewish Americans are very uh, pro-Palestinian. So we're, we're in the middle of a transition with Muslims and Palestinians coming into Congress and the Senate. You know, things are changing in the U.S. slowly, but ben, uh, Biden has to end this war quickly you know, with the right wing, uh, the most right wing Israeli government in history uh, that's that's resisting that. William Lawrence, we very much appreciate your insights. Thank you.